everybody. I have a very special guest today named Ron Gibson, and he is, he deals with land patents. And I will tell you, you know, Yeshua says that the truth will set us free, but I had no idea how strange the truth would be and how far down the rabbit hole it takes us. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, Ron is here to take us down one of those little rabbit holes today um, and tell us all about these, uh, the idea of the land patents and why we're even needing to take a look at this. And I know that there is just, there's so much involved. So why don't you start with maybe how you even got involved or even became, you know, how, how did you figure out that this was all going on? And then how'd you figure out how to get us all out of it? And then you also have a system to help everybody out. Yeah. So well, I guess Amy, the, start with let me open by saying what I've been blessed to compile as a lifelong endeavor. Uh, this didn't happen just overnight. <clears throat> it uh, has a great deal with, to do with my background. Uh, I grew up on a cattle ranch here in southern Oregon where I live and <clears throat> you learn very early the value of the land. We raised cattle and horses the cattle fed people there when it went to market. Uh, we raised hay. Uh, my mom had a garden as big as all outdoors. There were miners, probably a wild guess, a dozen or more that had mines up above where our ranch was up in the mountains. A lot of mineral in our country. There were 15 to 20 log trucks a day went up and down our little country gravel road at the time. It since has been paved. But I guess what I'm saying, <clears throat> I learned at an early age the value of the land. And then uh, working on the ranch with my father and my mother all my high school years. And then later on I joined the Marine Corps and spent for almost four years in the Marine Corps. And then from there I went to school. My major study was engineering. But my secondary study was constitutional law, and I loved it. My mom and dad were not radicals. I mean, people in that generation weren't radical about anything except protecting their rights. So I grew up in that atmosphere okay. of, of being around people that, that dealt with the land and resources and all of that. and. Uh, my sec like I said, my secondary studies was constitutional law, and I took to that like a duck to water. Loved it. Uh, I didn't go there to become an attorney. I'm not an attorney. I've never been an attorney. I don't want to be an attorney. That's a whole different realm. Everybody, I say everybody, I want to be careful of my words, but most people think attorneys and lawyers are one and the same, and I can tell you they are diabolically opposed in their function and their whole uh, agenda, uh, a good agenda or bad agenda, but they're you, totally, totally different. Go ahead. Do you mind, do you mind explaining to the audience the difference? You bet. Okay. Uh, 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 attorneys deal in statutes and codes. Those are man-made laws, okay, or they're perceived to be law. They're not. Statutes and codes, folks, is not law. They are corporate rules and regulation. We don't have a legitimate government. We have never had since way back when. So and, true. And, 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 and a, a lawyer deals in law, L-A-W. And that's why you see an attorney's card. He says, uh, practice at law. They are practicing of what they will never receive because they have a bar bar affiliation, which is uh, not to our best benefit, let's put it that way. Isn't it the Briti British Accreditation that's Registry? That's correct. Okay. And for you for for you who say that that hasn't been proven or whatever, it's it's a true thing. I'm sorry? It's a true thing. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or at least when we, I mean, at least when we were a corporation. <laughs> Well, which, is, which is a whole other thing. Yeah. I don't believe we are anymore, but, you, you know, I believe that we're now, what are we now? We're called, we're the United States, uh, 
United States, uh, oh, what are we? Do We're you a know? corporation pretending to be a government. Yeah. We are, what are we considered right now? We're a, de facto, we're a de facto government. Yeah. We are now the, let's see, United States. Um, Republic, restored Republic. We're the, we're the restored re Republic of the United States now, currently. No, we're, we're not restored yet. We're trying to get back to our constitutional roots which are, if you read the Constitution, is that it guarantees that we're to have a republic form of government, mm -hmm. not a corporate uh, masquerading as a government. And uh, there's a tremendous difference between the two. One major one, under a corporate ju uh, jurisdiction or perceived jurisdiction, you're guilty of everything until you're proven innocent of one thing. Under a constitutional republic, you're you're innocent of everything until you're proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Those there are tremendous crevasses, uh, gaps, if you please, uh, between what a corporate structure is and whatever. The states, after the Administrative Procedures Act was enacted uh, in uh, June 11, 1946, the so-called new government now, who are masquerading as a government, started redefining legal terms. And uh, just to give you for a few examples, number one is they redefined land and now called it real estate. Oh. Real estate is not the same thing as land, even though somebody may say, well, it encompasses exactly the same parameter, the boundaries, in other words, okay? By doing so, there's a maxim in law that's universal. One can only claim jurisdiction over that which one creates. So they create a new definition, therefore they get to manipulate it, they get to add this to implement that. That's why you have land use restriction, that's why you have code enforcement, that's why you have property taxes, and I could go on down the list. And they had no authority to do that because they pirated the, the, the constitutional protective covenants that all land has. So they had to get rid of that best they could so that they could, could take control. Yeah. And that's why you have all of the building code restrictions. My golly, I could go on and on and on and on. I know. And, and, and know. don't they... Don't they pretty much own everything? They own our cars, they own our homes, they own us as vessels. I've been studying up on all this stuff from David oh, Stray. They, 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 they don't own us. Well, let me rephrase that. There's a very famous case called uh, City of Dallas versus Mitchell. And on page three of that ruling, the court made a very profound statement. And it says, and I quote, our rights don't come from government. Our rights come from our Creator, and we are only subject to government rules and regulations if we volunteer to be subject to those rules and regulations. That's right. And so they've tricked right. us into so-called volunteering. And uh, there's an element of law called revocation of signature for cause. So your signature binds you. Well, if your signature binds you, you can withdraw that signature under what's called a revocation of signature for cause and start separating yourself. <clears throat> now, let, and I'm going to throw a broad blanket here, okay? <clears throat> all that the corporate government has done, all of it, is done under fraud. So when they claim that you and I are bound because of these what they call adhesion contracts, absolutely has no lawful standing because under the fraud statutes in our laws it states that for fraud negates in other words wipes out uh, voids out any and all contracts so all of this that they're claiming but the american people don't know that right so they just get led along excuse my expression but by the nose and they believe all this stuff that government tells them 
and then they wonder why they're in bondage. Right. The American yeah. people, for the most part, uh, is they're in bondage. And until we stop listening to the six o'clock news and go to the internet or go to the law library or buy a book or two, whatever, and you don't need to learn everything about law, but you need to know what, and the best thing that you can ever do is to go and get you a little copy of that thing called the Constitution and read it. And you will find nowhere in that to where Congress had the authority to implement a, a legislative act that creates a corporate government. I defy yeah. anybody to find that in our Constitution. Right. E everything is a trick. The check marks, the signatures, yeah. the way we sign our name, our grammar, the words we use, all of it is a trick. And so the American people haven't figured that out yet. But there, there is an awakening, I have to tell you. There is an awakening. And I'm thankful. And then I tell people, I probably spent the last, oh, up until f four years ago, the previous 35 years, give or take, standing on the rooftop, so to speak, screaming at the top of my voice, get your land patent brought forward. Because the land is basis of liberty. I mean, not this isn't because I say it. Our forefathers have referred to that principle over and over and over and over. The other thing that people do not understand, our right of land ownership is a God-given right. In my seminars that I do, and I do seminars all over the country, but I have a document there, it's called Forever, and I went to my Bible and I found out all of the different scriptures in the Bible that had to do with the word forever and land ownership. And over and over and over and over and over and over, God said, if my people will, <clears throat> you know, possess the land and they will inherit the land forever. I want to show you something, if I may. Of course. This is a copy of a typical land patent document. Okay. Okay. It says United States of America at the top. It has the emboss on it. It has a certification seal on it. I teach people how to bring their forever benefit because on this document is hereby granted to the undersigned to their heirs and assigns forever. Guess where our forefathers got the word forever? It comes from scripture. Okay? Your and I's right of land ownership is a God-given right. That's why it can't be restricted, it can't be manipulated, it can't be reduced, to the, and it cannot be taxed. There's no inalienable right of anywhere in our law that allows taxation for an inalienable right. That's like taxing people for speaking. It's the same, same scenario. I've written two books. This is one of them. It's called What You Need to Know About Land Patents. And the other book that I wrote is called You're Not a Slave. This book awesome. has to do with the issue of I prove that you're not obligated to pay property tax. And, uh, and I sell these by the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. And the point, I'm not saying that to me, excuse me, Pat and Ron on the back. People now are hungry. They're tired of the, excuse my friends, the bullshit. Oh, yeah. They're tired of the lies. They're tired of the deceit. They're tired of being taken advantage of them. And boy, I'm telling you, the time is right for people to come, get a hold of me, whatever, and I'll help you bring your land patent forward. Now, let me explain why this paper is, is so important. This patent, all patents in the United States, are what's called allodial titles. Allodial title means owing to no one, nor to any lord nor superior. If I can put it in very simple terms, you're the king of your land. And I challenge people and I encourage them, we better stop acting like slaves and start acting like kings. Because we, the people in our Constitution, did the same thing.
for the mass of the people in this nation at that generation and future generation. We the people, we're the king and they're the, the, our, our employees, if you please. We got it all 180 backwards now, and we go around begging for that. Oh, can I do that? Everything now is not by right. It's by permission. See, we used to function under what's called laws. And then when they shoved the Administrative Procedures Act, pushed the Constitution aside uh, and the uh, uh, common law, they then went to statutes and codes. Well, uh, greed and, and power is an ugly mix. So then they said, well, we want more power and we want more control. So now all of government is based upon presumption. Are you with me? We got laws, statutes and codes, and now we're at presumption. This is a dangerous area for the American people to be in because there are no boundaries as far as quote, quote, government is concerned. Right. Far, you have no rights. You're nothing but a slave. And we're going to treat you like a slave. You keep doing what we tell you to do. Don't speak up, sit down and shut up, but open your pocketbook and I'm going to keep tapping your, your, your bank account and your money. And yeah. that's the whole premise of what we're having to do with it. And, and I don't mean to make it sound like it's hopeless because it's not. There is an awakening in this nation like I never dreamed even possible as much as I was screaming at the top of my voice. But the point that I'm trying to, to get across to your listening audience there, this land patent is not subject to any building codes. It is not subject to any land use regulations. It is not subject to any environmental restrictions on your property because this has a proprietary allodial title. And what I just say allodial title was? Owing to no one. And it says here, forever. <laughs> I'm looking at my watch forever isn't up yet. <laughs> wow. A little, little bit of Ron's humor there. So, <laughs> so there is a way around, I mean, they they have they they were genius in order to get there's like a whole domino effect in order to get a home you have to have been paying taxes in order to get your taxes you have to have a job and in order to have the job you have to have this everything you have to have a driver's license and you have to have like all of this stuff to ever buy anything and to go you know you have to get the real estate and a real estate agent and you got to jump through all these hoops and, and all their regulations yeah really and so you, how do you, you brought how up in the world, how do, how do you get step, around all this? And what, every step that you just mentioned, every time you take the step of the items you mentioned, you got to pay. You yeah. take the next step, you got to pay. Yep. The next step, whatever. So at the end of the day, you come home, you work your tail end off, or the end of the month, and they have hardly enough money to buy groceries and pay the electric bill and the stuff, because all of the greed and stuff, and this uh, administrative stuff is, is is robbing people to death. Really? And my question yeah. to you folks, how long are you going to put up with it? Right. You don't have to put Absolutely. up with any of it. Right. I, I want to share something that most of my seminars, I will have someone that will come up and say, well, Ron, I heard what you said, but what can I do? I'm only one. And my immediate response to that, Amy, is but you are one and you and I are two the next person makes three you see where I'm going with it and that's how you defeat this this thing on this land patent stuff and David Strait does a wonderful job on on addressing seminars having to do with getting your your status changed which is a very very good thing to like do. Leave, like not no longer being a citizen but actually being a state national your own that's sovereign human being now, so you're free yeah how much do people want to be free and how much do you want to be in bondage or because how yeah or do you want to live truth or do you want to live a lie because exactly. our society is not what we think it is you guys this what he's talking about is the actual truth being a state national is an actual truth that's how we should be living our in our world but it, everything is upside down right now we have to see it for what it is the truth will set us free. Exactly. 
So yeah, how do, what do people, what, what can we do to, to own our house and to own our land? The only way you can do that is to bring the original patent forward. Every piece of private property that's owned has an underlying land patent under it. Okay. There's a process, and I'm not the first one to do this. I'm going to be careful how I say this. Okay. But I'm probably one of the very few that do it right. And I'm not saying that to pat Ron on the back. I'm not. Most people that have done land patents, their heading, there, there's a heading that goes on the on the first page of the legal document. But they have declaration of land patent. That's unlawful as it gets. What that means is that you are creating a new land patent by this document. You oh. and I don't have the authority to do that. The, the, the government is the trustees of the public lands. Oh, there's another thing. Uh, and I'll get that to a minute in a minute. But you have to have a certificate of acceptance of the Declaration of Land Patent because the land patent has already been established and there's only one. Mm. You can have two patents on the same land. Uh. Are, are you with me here? Yeah. So on the basis of that, you're heading at the top of the document that I put together for people in their, in their document. And there are certain legal requirements that have to be put in what I call a land patent sandwich so that all they can verify that there was a land patent relative to their property. They have to have proof that they own some property. That's their warranty deed. Uh, they have to have a summary of chain of title from them back to the patent. There has to be a notice document in case somebody else comes in and wants to challenge it, but they have to have lawful authority or uh, evidence to prove that. But I'm just saying, I refer to it as a sandwich, because it's kind of like going in your kitchen, put the bread down, now you put the mayonnaise on it, the lettuce, the meat, the cheese, the pickle, the, <laughs> you know. But, Maybe it shouldn't be called that at all, but that's what I call it. No, that's great, because once you put it all together, I'm... Exactly. Everything you need. Now you have something of substance, and you have something that cannot be defeated in the laws of this nation. There is no law. The United States Supreme Court has heard literally thousands of cases since the beginning of the patent process, and that there has never been a case lost at the United States Supreme Court level unless there was fraud or clerical error are the only two items that can nullify a land patent. Mm. So <clears throat> I'm just saying for 180, 190, 200 years, whatever it's been, uh, the land patent has never lost. There's a very famous case just a few years back, 1984, uh, called Summa Corporation versus State of California. And the reason that that case is so significant, California is a powerful state. I mean, they carry a lot of, a lot of horsepower, or did, they're losing it now. But at one time, they could kick butt and take names, so to speak. But they decided that they were going to come and take Summa Corporation's property in West Los Angeles the lagoons and the property that went clear to the Pacific Ocean. They're just going to come and take them by eminent domain. And so, and here's where they really erred, but attorneys being attorneys, they went to the Superior Court of California, Summa lost. They went to the appeals court in the state of California, the appeals court ruled against Summa. They went to the state Supreme Court, the Supreme Court of California ruled. They went to the district court, federal district court, they ruled against them. Went to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeal, they ruled against them. They went to the Supreme Court, the United States Supreme Court, whoa, whoa, just plain whoa. First of all, California, you did not have privity to come into this under a third party, as a third party to intervene into a forever contract, okay? This patent that we're talking about is a forever contract. It says so right on it. Didn't I read that to forever. you? Forever. Forever. 
it, it isn't up yet. And my question <laughs> of, of, of bringing that up, California thought they were just going to take that land and let the public have it for access to the beach and oh. at the expense of taking private property. And the Supreme Court also got very deep in the treaty, the Guadalupe Hidalgo Treaty between Mexico and the United States. And we have all kinds of treaties relative to the land that is now called the United States of America. That treaty is a protective covenant of this patent. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In other words, the treaty, by virtue of those international agreements, having to do with the land, because when land is acquired, there is, in most instances, if not all, a treaty that is signed. And mm -hmm. when that treaty is signed, all of the land that's in question that came to the United States had to be protected by the treaty. The treaty supersedes any and all challenges to that land. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I want to mention I, I get very irritated at people when they keep calling, well, that's government land out there in the desert. That's government land, all the timber land out west. All of the mining, vast deserts and everything, that, that, that's government land. The government cannot own a single square inch of any of it. If you read your constitution and shut that six o'clock news off, you'll find out the only land that the government can own is military bases, ammunition, storage facilities, docks, post offices, and other needful buildings. What happens, and I'm going to take you back a little bit, folks, in history. When the United States first became a country, a designated sovereign country, and they started acquiring land either by conquest or by purchase or by trade, by whatever means, a treaty was involved. And those treaties were not to be broken. They broke the ones with the Indians terribly, but that's probably the, the biggest exception to it. But nevertheless, the treaty was still binding, even though our politician didn't honor it very well. But in doing so, that land that was acquired does not have, present title to the United States government. It goes into a public trust of which the government as an entity there as a sovereign government or whatever is the trustees of that land. Hmm. Why do you think our constitution says we the people? Right. Then if we the people, then who owns all that land out there. Us. Us. We, we, <laughs> we do. We, we the people. Yeah. The people haven't got that through their head. They just, and anytime I hear somebody, well, that's government land, I jump right in the middle of it. Said, stop calling it government land. Yeah. Now I'm going to read you something. That's just rumor. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's a facade. Yeah. To convey a title. The seller must himself have a title to the property which is subject to the transfer. Where did the government get the title to all of these lands that came by way of treaty? When the Constitution forbids it. Right. Where, where they don't. Their, their title. They I've, don't. Helped, I've helped a number of people with code enforcement people trying to say, well, you're out of code. Well, if it was... The, the property and the home and the electric or plumbing or sewer was in place before there was a code, then they're not subject to that code. You bring your land back and forward, you're not subject to it anyway, because it's owing to no one. But the point that I'm making is I have them get a copy of their patent, and when the code enforcement guy come by, as they did in Suma case, I'm going to get back to that, the Supreme Court told the state of California, you do not have privity to intervene into a private contract. When this document is issued, it is a forever contract. Says so right on it, okay? So if it's a forever contract, then the, the Supreme Court told California, where are you named on this patent? <laughs> so I have people take their patent Got a code enforcement guy come along? Show me where your name's on my patent. 
That's why it's very important of what I help people do is to bring their land patent forward. And that's all encompassed in this book, the 1980 page book, Gobs and Gobs and Gobs of Case Law. And the reason that I wrote the book like that, I did not want somebody sometime down the road coming along and saying, well, Ron, that's just your opinion. What right. is in this book? There's nothing in here that's Ron's opinion. I, got, I can back up everything I say, everything I say. So I'm just sharing with you and your listening audience, tons and I'll get into mortgages in here from about page 90 to 100. Uh, they can't do lawfully do a foreclosure. They cannot evict you off your property if you have it under a land patent. Uh, the banks can't come and foreclose on you. Da -da 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 -da. I mean, it, it just I, what I'm sharing with you when I put all the support documents is a one or a two day seminar. So, so it's all illegal. Every it's bit. all illegal. Well, first of all, let's back up. What you just uh. said, let's look at the whole picture. The very fact that a so-called bank or a mortgage company, they're supposedly a bank, loan you money is an absolute fraud on its face. They do not loan you one single red penny. They take your promissory note, which is listed on that promissory note, exact, and I'm just going to use 500000 just for the sake of our discussion. And you want to buy this $500,000 home and land, and that promissory note is for $500,000. When you sign the paper that they claim is a contract, it is no such thing as a contract simply because under the law of contract, and I've studied, I write contracts, whatever, all parties have to be named, all parties have to be signed, all the relative factors have to be made known on the contract. You can't withhold something or that fraud. That's what the banks do. They take the promissory note, can be used in numerous ways. The most prevalent, and one of one of two is that they cash it as a check. So when you sign that uh, agreement and your so-called borrowing five hundred thousand dollar, they hold that promissory note for three days. On the fourth day, they either cash it and draw the cash out. That cash goes to the, it's drawn from the International Monetary Fund, then goes to the title company that pays off the seller. Are you with me? Oh, yeah. Okay. Or that promissory note is monetized, it's securitized, it's sent to Dun & Bradstreet for rating. They rate them, because, I mean, thousands of them every day, all of these mortgages. They then send it to Wall Street and they're split up into different types of stock. So nobody knows who the owner is. Under, under foreclosure law, only the owner can order a foreclosure. The ownership by virtue of that promissory note of however they treated it may be owned by 10,000 different people all over the world. So then they claim, well, now we're not a bank, we're the servicing agent. That's another fraud because they never loan you a penny. Your promissory note that you signed is drawn, the money is drawn from the IMF, from your birth certificate account. Which okay. were worth billions of dollars. Which is worth some hundreds of billions in certain instances. But nevertheless, there is lots of money in every one of your birth certificates. They draw that money out, which is your money. There, that account. But you go to us. <laughs> so then they pay the, the title company who pays off the seller. And then 45 days later, you get a payment book for the next 30 years to an entity that didn't loan you a penny. The boy, you talk about a fraud. And then and, you continue to pay them every month. Yeah. Then you continue pay to pay your mortgage. And then, and <laughs> it's it is so funny. ludicrous. It's so <laughs> ludicrous. It's, it's, it's literally sick. Uh, and people have lost their homes. They worked their uh -huh. butts off to try to pay for a home. And then the tax people come along. And there's, there's a deliberate 
agenda going on here, folks, folks, to remove you from your property. Not just from the home, but from the property. And it's done by unlawful taxation. Mm -hmm. If you go back, and I'm an av I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't chew, I don't go with the girls that do, but I study. And I've had a lifelong endeavor of study. And what I've learned is just, sometimes I wish I didn't know what I know, if you hear what I'm saying. But nevertheless, uh, when I went through all of the archive records about the congressional hearings and setting up the general land office, who was, was administered by Congress with the authorization to disperse the public domain, the lands that are not been uh, uh, predisposed. Uh, in those hearings, and I have copies of it, that they said, we want to make a system so that even the poor man would not be subject to un uh, unlawful legislation, unlawful court decree, or from speculators, da 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 da, -da. That's why, that's why they made this unlodial title. Nobody can touch it. Uh, I hope that sinks in, folks. Nobody can touch this. Wow. And I've got an adversary out there uh, who keeps trying to paint me as a bastard child from hell. Uh, and he's an attorney. Uh, hates what I do. Uh, absolutely hates what I do. He's telling everybody that I'm a fraud, that I'm, none of this patent stuff exists. In my book, in one of the chapters, the patent issue has survived the Supreme Court scrupulous uh, or, uh, scrutiny, is what I'm trying to say, for over 187 years. 187 years, folks. Wow. It has never lost a case. And this idiot's trying to tell me that I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know what's interesting about that? Let me give you a little sidebar. I'm the chairman of the largest mining district in the United States. And uh, when we first set up Jefferson Mining, it's in, we got a website called jeffersonminingdistrict.com. I sent a letter to all the government agencies. And I said, if you have a question about what we uh, share as law, don't give me lip service, bring your documents, sit down, and we'll discuss it and we'll see which one of us is right. It's been 13 years now since we set it up, and not one government agent has ever come and said, Ron, I disagree with you, and I want to sit down with you and talk about it. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because they know that we're right. I want to tell Absolutely. you a quick story. They had a, a county commissioner a uh, gal by the name of Sandy Casanelli uh, years ago, and the Bureau of Land Management and the Sheriff's Department was given the Miners Act, and they have no lawful authority because there's a mining law called HR 365. Uh, and anyway, they were arresting and giving tickets out to miners for mining. So I went to Sandy and I said, Sandy, can you get a meeting together with the county, other county commissioners? She said, yeah. She said, I'll do that. So on the day in question, she came out of the courthouse to me, and about 15, 18 of us, whatever there was. Uh, and so we were following her up the steps, and we got a couple of steps up toward the courthouse. She turned around and put her hand right in the top of my chest, the right hand. She said, hold on. And I said, what? She said, I need to tell you guys something. And I thought, oh boy, what's now? And she's still holding her hand on my chest. And she turned at the same time and she pointed from one end of that courthouse to the other. And she said, I want you all to know everybody in that building is scared to death of you miners. Mm -hmm. And I said, what? She said, yes. And I said, why? I mean, I didn't know anything about that. She said, because they all now know that you guys know the law. And uh, we do. That's You're undoable. Yeah. <laughs>
But yeah. We, we've had to out of self-defense because of the abuse. But anyway, I didn't mean to get off onto all of that. But the point that I'm making here is that all of this stuff having to do with this land patent, I can back it up. Yeah. And if anybody absolutely. wants to challenge me, get a hold of me, and I'll sit down with you and we'll go over. And I've had some very heated discussion with judges who know nothing about what they're talking about. And because they sit on the bench and have a black robe, just tell me, when they, what's the old saying? It's something when one person is perceived to be an idiot, something else for them to open their mouth and prove it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's yeah, like you even, even more devious, the satanics and Luciferians exactly. are behind it all. Exactly. And they, they know what they're trying to protect and they, you know, they know what they're doing. They know what they're doing, but it's the same thing as like all of us being totally unaware. There are some people who are a part of the system and really pushing the system that aren't aware that they're pushing something totally illegal. Like the people at the post office who are just like following the rules and people, you know, stamping everything and pushing everybody through the line that, you know, most of them have no clue that they're working for the Satanists and the Luciferians, <laughs> that, that they're working for evil. They have no idea. Yeah. And they have no idea how corrupt and, and how wrong it all is. They think that they're doing the right thing. You, you know, they actually think that they're doing something good. You have said a mouthful because it is as wicked as it gets. It really is, you guys. Hold it on. really is. Yeah. And go back and watch my, watch my video with that, uh, well, who is that? Mike, M Mike, look, look for that video with Mike, Michael or Mike or something like that. It was like around Christmas time of last year. He looks like Santa. You guys remember that guy? Go back and watch that again. He goes into detail about what he found when he went to look for pictures of like the, the courthouses and the stuff that they have going on. Oh man. When you look into the symbolism and all that, it goes deep. Okay. Go ahead though. No, I was just going to share with you here, just to validate my point. This is a quote out of the report from the General Land Office, who was commissioned by Congress to do the, all the paperwork, set up the rules and regulations for dispersing lands under the land patent, okay? Every year they have to submit a report to, to Congress and the Senate. And this is an exact quote, none of my doing, or exact quote, you can go look it up if you choose. The following is referenced from the Commissioner of the General Land Office book, page 28 and 29, dated 1870. Quote, the individual title derived from the government involves the entire transfer of the ownership of the soil and water. It is purely allodial with all the incidents pertaining to that title as substantial as the infancy of a Teutonic civilization. Following in the wake of this fundamental reform in our state land laws are several others which constitute appropriate corollary. Listen to this next short little uh, paragraph. The states or the statute of use, we were talking about use before in the and the code enforcement trying to restrict you from the use of was never adopted in the public land states. Was never adopted. Huh? What? Was never adopted. Does that sink in, folks? Cool. In other words, you have freedom to do with your land as you choose. Wow. Yeah, let me go on. And hence, the complex distinction between use and trust has never embarrassed our jurisprudence. Now, let me tell you something, folks, what that means. It means that for somebody to come and try to get a code enforcement or the, or the government entity trying to implement some statutes and code or restriction of your land is an embarrassment to the court system. That's what that's saying. They have no authority to infringe upon your private property. And boy, that's a, I got to pound on people's head pretty hard to get that sink in. Yeah. The point I'm trying to make here for you folks is the very fact that patent spot, uh, 
is a powerful document. There are 11 different types of patents. The homestead patent is just one. That's what the mining patents or railroad patents, that's by act of Congress. I mean, it's... Well, and here's the thing people have to realize too, because they'd be like, well, why do they even include the patent and the paperwork in the first place? Well, these Luciferians, they have to disclose some truth in their lies. They well, have to mix truth and lies. The other thing about it, you... you, you you can't do anything rightfully without a title unless mm -hmm. there's absolutely no claim or prior position. And the land that was acquired by these different treaties from the United States <coughs> placed all of that land in the United States into a holding trust position of which the United States government was a trustee for the purpose of disbursement, not for the purpose of hanging on to it, making wildernesses out of it, monuments out of it, uh, you know, game reserves out of it. None of that stuff's lawful. If you go look at the, at the uh, wilderness hat, on the very first page, it says if there's mineral there and it's more valuable than what is supposed benefit of the uh, wilderness area, and they can't make a wilderness out of it. They've tied up a good part of the Western United States over this wilderness stuff. I did a study for a company. I was a, hired as a managing consultant for an investment group out of Seattle, and they wanted me to do some research on why was the top items why uh, mineral projects fail. It took me eight months, but in the location of the mineral and where they were located, I found something very disturbing everywhere where there is large volume and high purity of minerals that we need every day of our life. There's a mylar over the top of it of a restrictive covenant that's put on the top of it by monument, by, uh, you know, game reserve, by, by wow. whatever. Now, wait till you hear this. I total all of those up. And the combination of the withdrawn lands in the United States is larger than 26 states in the United States. Yeah. Whoa. It's a fact. Whoa. It's larger than 26 states. Oh, my gosh. And here we are paying... Five dollars and ninety cents for a tube of eight foot long tube before when he used to buy it for a dollar ninety nine. Gold used to be fifteen thirty dollars an hour. Now it's eighteen nineteen hundred dollars an ounce. You know I've been both in the industrial mineral side. I've been a miner. I know I've had resources of my own, and I'm not saying that to impress anybody. What I'm saying is, you damage a farmer, you hurt everybody. You damage a miner, you hurt everybody. You damage a logger, the timber industry, you damage everybody. You damage a manufacturing that makes products that we, the people, demand and need and whatever. You hurt everybody. When are we going to wake up? In this country, we're losing about 1,100 acres a day for the last 30 years. The development, the withdrawn, or to some type of restriction in it. We're going to wake up one of these days, folks, and you're not going to find any food on the grocery shelves. Now, let me give you a little example. In 1965, the year I graduated from high school, the United States government had two and a half years worth of food surplus. In 2000, 22 years ago, they had 39 days. You can't grow a garden in 39 days, folks. We are walking on thin ice. And the only way you're going to protect that is to bring that land patent forward. Absolutely. So you, have, you have total control of it and whatever. I mean, I'm on my phone here. It rings 29 hours a day, Saturday, Sunday. If I go take a shower, the phone rings. Sit down to eat, the phone rings. But people are hungry, Ron. What can you do? Or I need your books or whatever. Yeah. So I sacrifice a lot to try to help those people who are searching.
Thank and you. I, and and, and I'm, I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that they're bothering me. I don't mean that in a negative sense, but come right. back to me uh, in those times. It just thrills me to death because there's an awakening happening. Mm -hmm. There is a definite awakening happening. So, you know, there, there, there's so much to this land issue in one sense and yet a very simple in the other. You either own some, and I've had people say, well, I own my land. And I said, what makes you think so? He <laughs> said, I paid it off and I got my, my uh, warranty deed. And I said, go home and look at your warranty deed. Well, why? I said, I'll give you a hundred dollar bill if you can show me where it lists you as an owner. He said, what wow. do you mean? I said, you go look at your warranty deed and you are listed as a tenant or as a tenant in common. Nowhere on a warranty deed will it say that you're an, you're, that you're an owner. <clears throat> because a warranty deed cannot convey a title. A warranty deed only does two things. It acknowledges an equity interest in a given piece of property and it gives you the permission, not right, but permission to occupy that land. But zero ownership. There is no ownership. The only thing that conveys an ownership is this land patent. Right there. It's the only title there is. There is none other. So, you want to Every be... Go ahead. Everybody needs to take your course. Everybody, whether you're renting or you or you own or you're going to own. Exactly. No matter what, you, we, know, we have to know these laws, you guys. We've got to learn this stuff. And it's not a whole lot that you need to learn. Okay. You, you, you just need your foundational stuff. To okay. Know. okay. You know, the federal courts, I've read, I do a tremendous amount of research, case law and history and all of that. And the courts have said, I don't know how many times. <laughs> Excuse me. If you don't know your rights, you don't have any rights. Unfortunately, that's true. It's not that they're not available, but if you don't know what you're, then you don't know how to defend them. I can't come and defend everybody out there. So you have to, you know, there's a scripture in my Bible that said one, for one to learn, one must be willing to be taught. And boy, that is so true. And I get involved with all kinds of people. Some of them are hungry and willing and will work their tail end off to get it done. And others will spit on it, throw cold water on it, chastise me, claim I'm the dirtiest thing since filthy rags. And, uh, you know, I'm a big boy, I can take it. But none of them has ever proven me wrong. Never proven, I guess. I know, this, the, but this stuff. <laughs> but, but the patent wrong. Yeah, this is real, you guys. This is real. And this, this clown that's always bad-mouthing me out there. And I had to laugh. I, I want to tell you folks this, so that you know. He sent me a, an email that just, everything he could, he could think of it to degrade me. And all his courts in Wisconsin, and he had half a page of court cases to where the patent lost. And I read that, and I'm very familiar with, with the cases. But what he didn't bother to say or admit, that every one of those was not heard in a court of competent jurisdiction. All the lower courts, other than the Supreme Court, can't hear a patent case. And yet they'll go through the whole enchilada, and he used that as information and ammunition to throw at me, and not a one of those cases can stand because a number of them were appealed to the Supreme Court, and they won at the Supreme Court. Ah. So, you know, Jeez. but you run into the... So much misinformation. It, well, and so that, much manipulation. That, that's my point. Because the very fact of that slant patent stuff, that's serious. And I read to you in page five of my book of what the General Land Office said. All patents are allodial. Then I've had people, well, the low deal was only good for the first one. How come it says for errors in the assigned forever? I mean, they make yeah. stupid statements. Wow. 
and have no idea what they're talking about. And wow. I'm, I'm not trying to throw anything in anybody's face. But when they open their, you know, you know who Ron White is on the blue collar comedy team. He's the Texan there that has a cigarette in one hand, drink in the other. Uh, Jeff Foxworthy and Larry the Cable Man and all of that. Well, anyway, on a number of his programs that they did there, he said, well, he said, one thing's for certain. He said, you can't fix stupid. Unfortunately, <laughs> 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 uh, uh, I meet a lot of those people. Yeah. All right. So where can people go to get your information in to sign up with your for your course? Uh, we have a, a website. It's called AmericanMeetingGroup.com. American meetinggroup.com and the coordinator there is named Robert Sharp 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 guy uh, just he's my right hand man mm -hmm. uh, but if you are interested in books or whatever but that takes care of all the scheduling with American meeting group mm -hmm. but if you want to get a hold of me to get a book <clears throat> I'll give you my my address and my email here so uh, my e email is D R I T E C R G at hotmail dot com. That's D R I T E C R G at hotmail dot com. My phone number is five four one six two one five five four eight, and my mailing address is Ron Gibson eleven. North, that's an N with a period, Peach Street, like a fruit you eat off a tree, Medford, Oregon, just like it sounds, 97501. So 97501. So if you're interested in the books, I have two, the patent book and the slave book. So, and I did the same thing with the slave book, is loaded, loaded, loaded with case law. So. Awesome. Awesome. Everybody get those books, get your hands on those books and spread this video to everybody that you know, that either could own a home, wants to own a home, does own a home, or doesn't want to rent anymore, or it doesn't matter. We all need to know this information and spread it around, please, with as many people as possible to save our lands and to start growing our own food. Amy, if I may, for those of you who are hungry for this, uh, if you would be willing to be a sponsor, in other words, find a place and help gather some people to come to the seminar, I'll come and I'll do a seminar. Awesome. On and whatever. And uh, we've we've done a lot of them, but there's so much more to cover. So right. So if you're interested in that, get a hold of me or get a hold of Amy. She'll get a hold of me. And I guess I can include you in that, if I may. Of course, of course. <laughs> So, uh, but anyway, that, awesome. that's kind of the Reader Digest version of the uh, land patent issue. One other thing that I'd like to mention, <clears throat> there is a federal statute called Title 43, Section 57 and 83. And in that it says that you can bring a certified copy of your land patent if you're involved in a case has to do with land or your rights or whatever <clears throat> into any court and all courts in the United States and the courts must take judicial notice now they have to acknowledge what this is of its evidentiary effect in other words that's the true title to the land in question okay as though it were the original. Wow. You can walk right into any court because the courts have no jurisdiction mm -hmm. over this unless it's the Supreme Court. So when the court seems to think they can start ruling on land patent, all you have to do is bring this document in and the court judge better take judicial notice of it because they're done and now he's, he's violated his constitutional oath. Wow. So, so just with, with a little bit of education, 
just a little bit of education, you guys will have uh, so much more power in our hands. It is. You know, Jesus looked down at Jerusalem and wept. Did my people perish for the lack of knowledge? Knowledge properly applied is called wisdom. Wisdom properly applied equals productivity. So, you know, which direction you want to go? Yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, my gosh. This has just been amazing. Well, I'm so, so me. glad that I ha brought you on. Well, thank you for having me. And like I say, for those you folks that's interested in my books or for me to come and do a seminar, uh, we film it as well. Robert accompanies me, and then you can get a copy of that video if you choose. Or, you know, we're trying to get the information out to the people. It's not about the money. It's mm -hmm. about getting them educated. Do you want to protect your land or not? Because right. with warranty deed, there is no protection. Zero. None. Wow. And that provides protection is that land patent right there. Okay. All right. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Can I confuse them the best I can? That... No, this has just been amazing. I can't wait to get your books and read those and dive right in. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for having me on and allowing me to, to be here a part of this today. Of course. Now, where are you located? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I just moved. I just moved. <laughs> so, uh, But I am looking to get some land. I'm going to be getting some land, so I'm going to be applying uh, everything I learned from you. But I didn't know if you were in the southwest or the east or central part of the country or. Out no, I'm not. I'm not really telling anybody where I'm at right now. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. And I'm not sure how long I'll be here anyway. I don't know what I'm going to be doing. I'm kind of floating around. So. What you're telling me is that you're somewhere. I'm somewhere. There you go. <laughs> I'm somewhere flitty floating. <laughs> like I, I have a saying that people say, "Well, I lost this and I can't find it." And that's, that's not lost. Everything is somewhere. Right? <laughs> so anyway. All right. Thank well, you thank you all. so, so much. And um, yeah, I just, you're, you're awesome. And I appreciate you so much. You guys, thank you so much for watching. Please share this, like I said, and go check out his web, website and buy these books. And we all got to, you know, stand up together. Yeah. All right. Thank you much. Thanks. Bye, guys.